Hi guys, it's Ben Heath from Lead Guru, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create Facebook sponsored ads. Now, when you're using Facebook or Instagram, you may see the sponsored tag alongside certain posts. Those are paid ads that people are running on Facebook and Instagram that businesses are using to try and get their products and services in front of the almost 3 billion people that use Facebook and Instagram on a monthly basis. And you may want to get your ads in front of people as well. You get your products and services in front of people, use it as a tool to drive sales, and that might be where how you landed on this video. So I'm gonna go through the entire process. I'm gonna walk you through exactly how you go about creating uh, Facebook sponsored ads that will work on both Facebook and Instagram. And um, hopefully you can implement the steps and use it to generate a whole bunch of sales for your products and or leads for your services, depending on what kind of business you have. Okay, so I am in an example Facebook ad account here. That's what I'm gonna to use to demonstrate this. And I'm in Ads Manager. Now, if you're not familiar with um, Ads Manager, you've never looked at anything like this, I'd recommend you, you check out a video I've created called How to Create a Facebook Business Manager Account. So if you wanna advertise on Facebook, on Instagram, it's well worth creating a business manager account, and then you create an ad account within that, and once you've done that, you'll be sent to a, a screen that looks like this. So there'll be a link in the video description below, all about how to create a business manager account. Just go through that, follow that video step by step, get your business manager set up, and then you can come into Ads Manager right here and follow along this process from where we are right now um, with me, okay? So let's go ahead and create a campaign. So you wanna click on this green plus create button. And then what I'm gonna recommend you start with is a conversions campaign. It's not the simplest campaign type to use, but it is certainly the most effective, okay? Now to use a conversions campaign objective, you're going to need to have the Facebook pixel installed on your website. So again, there'll be a link in, another, in, in, there'll be a link in the video description below to another video showing you exactly how to get the Facebook pixel set up and installed on your website. So if you haven't yet done that, again, I'd strongly recommend you go ahead and do that. If you want to um, not worry about that for now and just get started as fast as possible and add in the Facebook pixel, or later, then you want to go ahead and use the traffic um, objective for now. But as I said, I would recommend you go ahead and get that done and use conversions. Okay, um, so we can give this a name if we want. So let's just call this um, example Facebook ad campaign. And then you'll immediately see here, it's a great visual representation, that when you create a Facebook ad campaign, there's three levels. There's the campaign level, then within that you have the ad set level, and then within that you have the ad itself. And that's what you can see here, right? And the different levels govern different parts of the Facebook sponsored ad, right? So, um, well, we're gonna walk through the steps, so you'll see it, but ad set, for example, is targeting things along those lines. So let's call that example, Facebook ad campaign, example, ad set, and let's go here with, example ad. We'll keep things nice and simple to start with. So go ahead and click continue. Okay, I am by no means going to cover every single little setting option that's available within a Facebook ad campaign setup. There are tons. I have videos on just about every single setting. So if there was anything you were particularly interested, like special ad categories or buying types or campaign objectives, you can literally just search in YouTube for my name, Ben Heath, and the name of the thing, a video will pop up and you can go through it. So if there's anything that I missed, you're like, well, what about that? What about that? Don't worry, you can go ahead and find in the details. What I am gonna focus on here is what you need to get right and what you need to add in if you're creating Facebook sponsored ads, perhaps for the first time, or perhaps you're relatively new to Facebook advertising, and we're gonna cover what you need to do and need to get right. So we've already selected our campaign objective. As I said, I would strongly recommend use conversions. To do so, you will need the Facebook pixel installed. Otherwise, go ahead and use traffic. And then we're gonna scroll down and for the purposes of this campaign, we're not gonna worry about campaign budget, budget optimization. Again, I have videos about that. I would normally recommend you use this, but just to get started, don't worry about it, okay? So then that's that's literally all we need to do at the campaign level. So very straightforward, don't worry about that. Then we're gonna jump over to the ad set level. Now at the ad set level, we're selecting options for targeting, who we're gonna to advertise to, and delivery settings. You know, when our ads are gonna run, where they're gonna run, all that sort of stuff, okay? So the vast majority of you are gonna to want to send people through to your website, and you're going to want to be optimizing for a specific event, like a purchase or a lead or something along those lines. So for example, let's assume you're an e-commerce product, I could go ahead and pop in purchase in there, okay? Now, I'm gonna get um, warnings pop up as we go through this, because it's an example Facebook ad account, we don't have things set up uh, fully in here, so just ignore those. If I don't talk about it, it's not something you need to worry about but you could go for the purchase conversion event. And if you're unfamiliar with this, when you go through that Facebook pixel setup video, it'll clear it all up for you. 
Don't worry about dynamic creative, don't worry about offer. The next thing to get into is budget. I strongly recommend you use daily budget as opposed to lifetime budget. Those campaigns run consistently, or at least can, and they tend to produce better results and you can scale them, lots of advantages. Again, you can find out more info about that. In terms of what to start spending, I have a whole video about starting budgets, so I'll include a link in the video description below. But just to quickly say that you want to spend something that is meaningful to you, as in you're gonna to want to come back in and see how your campaign's performing, you're not just gonna set it and forget about it for a month, but not, no amount of money that's gonna in any way hurt you if you lose it, right? So there's usually a sweet spot where you're like, oh, if I spend that much, I don't want to lose it, but our business, it's not going to hurt our business in any way. We're going to be absolutely fine. But it's going to be important enough for me to check and be motivated to improve this incentivized to get it right. What that is for your business, you know, for some businesses that might be as little as $10 a month. For others, it might be a thousand. You know, we, as a Facebook ads agency, we work with clients where we spend the full range of, of, of uh, well, not right at the lower levels, but it can go, you know, uh, larger businesses can spend huge amounts and it'd be relatively uh, small amounts. I, mean, I imagine for most people watching this video, it's probably going to be something you know, relatively small, might be $20, $30 a day, something along those lines. Okay, I'll leave it at the default. Um, then we scroll down to the um, audiences section. Now, I'd strongly recommend that you don't mess with custom audiences or lookalike audiences initially. Those are more advanced Facebook advertising techniques. They're incredibly effective, but when you're getting used to creating Facebook sponsored ads, when you're used to, when you're learning the process, don't need to worry about it. Then set your location. Um, this needs, this just wants to be where the majority of your potential customers are from. You can do a local area. So for example, I am based in Cheltenham in England. So I could, for example, and all the Cheltenham's have come up, I think, except for England, <laughs> which is probably the original. And um, so I could add in, for example, Cheltenham and then a certain radius around that. I could do, you know, 14 miles around Cheltenham or whatever. Just think about where the majority of my customers located. It is absolutely fine to advertise nationally. So if you sell a product, for example, or a service that can be delivered internationally or nationally, you could go with United Kingdom. And in fact, it is also absolutely fine to go with multiple countries. So as a business ourselves, you know, we're a Facebook advertising agency. We work with clients all around the world. The two major markets that we operate in are the UK and the US. I mean, we have lots of clients in Australia, Canada and stuff like that, but those are the two major ones. So we could start with something like, uh, let's add in Canada and let's add in Australia. We could start with something like that would be absolutely fine as well. So don't need to overthink that, just where the majority of your clients, your customers are likely to be based. Age range, you want to set that around what you think the majority of your customers fall into, but be quite generous. So let's say, for example, the majority of your customers are aged 30 to 45. You might want to go with something a little bit wider than that. Better to be um, better to be too broad than too narrow. Facebook ad campaigns tend to perform better with larger audiences because that allows Facebook's machine learning process to work out who is best to advertise to. So let's say the majority of customers are 30 by 30 to 45, we would go with something like 25 to 50 or 25 to 55, something along those lines, okay? Genders, if you are very heavily skewed towards women or men, let's say 85% plus, then you can go with one or the other. Otherwise, again, I would keep it broad. If you are say 70% of your customers are women, 30% are men, I would leave it at all. You don't want to discount that, that really large um, proportion of your target market. Then we get into detailed targeting. I'll include another link in the, in the video description below. Lots of links, but I wanna make this as useful as possible to how about we how we go about finding interest targeting options, cold audience targeting options that can perform really well. So I'll include a link to that and you can go through that. Um, but you can get started by adding in things that are relevant to your business. So let's say for example, um, if I was advertising shoes, I could start looking, adding in things like shoes and it's taking a second. But, you know, I've got shoes. I've got all sorts of different types of, you know, trendy shoes. You could women's shoes, bespoke shoes. And you can just go through these lists and just start to pick out options that you think are highly relevant to your business. This is an absolutely fine way to get started. There are more advanced techniques later on, but absolutely fine ways to get started. So, for example, I know that if I was advertising my own services, my own Facebook advertising services, I could go with things like business page admins. So that's the, the admins of business related Facebook pages. I know that's gonna be a good um, targeting option for me to use, okay? I'd, I'd recommend you only add in one targeting option per ad set because we're just gonna get started with one ad set. It's absolutely fine just to add in one. Um, 
There are advantages to doing that. You'll find out more info about that if you check out some other targeting related videos. But I just add in the one for now that's going to set you up better for success later. So go with the one that you think is most applicable to your audience. Again, broader is better than more specific. Now, what I would encourage you to do once you've added in your targeting options is to unselect this detailed targeting expansion. And what that's going to do is on the right hand side, you're going to get an audience definition. Now, my audience definition is 4 million people. So there are 4 million business page admins aged 25 to 55 in the UK, US, Canada and Australia. 4 million is a perfectly fine audience size to advertise to. If I was to find that this was anything below 250,000, I'd try and make it broader. And you can do that, obviously, by adding in extra location targeting options, if that's possible for your business, if you're not a local business. You can do that by using broader um, detailed targeting options, so targeting options that are going to encompass more people. You can also do that by going from just men or women to all. You can even get rid of all detailed targeting options if, for example, you're just advertising locally and this audience is quite small. Now, if you're just advertising locally, some businesses are always going to have audiences less than 250,000 people, in which case that's fine. Don't worry about that. But for all other businesses, I want the minimum to be 250,000. There are maximums that I would put in place. Again, another link in the video description about ideal audience size if you want to check that out. OK, but otherwise we're set up and I would recommend you actually leave this unselected when you're first launching a Facebook sponsored ad. That's something that can be added in. Languages, this is unlikely to apply to a lot of people watching this, but for some it may. Perhaps you just want to reach certain um, language speakers within a market. If you're in Canada, for example, maybe you just want to reach French speakers, in which case you can go ahead and add in more specificity around here. But most are going to want to go with all languages. Then we get into the placement options. OK. Placements refers to where on Facebook and Instagram your ads are going to be displayed. So the default is automatic placements, but if we select manual placements, I can show you the options. There's four major categories. There's Facebook, Instagram, Audience Network, and Messenger. And you can see that within these, there's lots of different uh, various options, okay? Loads and loads of placement options. If you are using the conversions objective, as I would recommend, you can absolutely go ahead with automatic. And that's one of the advantages of the conversions objective is Facebook is going to work out where your best results are going to come from. Are you going to get the best results from Facebook feed or Instagram stories? And they'll put your ads there according to performance. If you're using something like traffic because you don't have the Facebook pixel installed, then I'd recommend you come in and narrow it significantly and just go with the feeds options and the stories options and the rest of the stuff you're going to want to um, unselect. And you could even get more specific and just go with, say, Facebook feed and Instagram feed and get rid of these other options. Although these other options only make up a small fraction of your own impressions. And then you could leave the, the various stories options in there. OK, and you could come in with something like this if you wanted to. That would be absolutely fine. And what I'd recommend you do if you're running the traffic objective, because with the traffic objective, Facebook isn't necessarily going to know where your customers, let's say in this case, we're optimizing for purchase, where your purchases are coming from. They're just sending you people to your website. They don't have that further visibility. And therefore you want to select the higher quality placement options where the quality of the traffic is going to be higher. With automatic placements, you don't need to worry about that because Facebook's going to find those anyway, because that's where people are going to convert from. So hopefully that makes sense. But for this example, we're using conversions. Therefore, you can go over the automatic placements. Um, don't worry about adding in a cost control. Again, something you can look to add in later on. I have videos about cost controls and cost caps, so you can check those out if you want. But otherwise, that is our targeting, our ad set level and delivery settings and placements taken care of. We can go ahead and click next. Then we get into the ad level, which is, of course, a really important part of any Facebook sponsored ad. It's the part that your customers actually see. It's the part that you'll see when you're creating Facebook um, when you're seeing sponsored ads on Facebook or on Instagram, um, it's the visual part, obviously a very important um, thing. So Facebook now is defaulting to a lot of dynamic formats and creative. And I think that really overcomplicates things for a lot of new Facebook advertisers. If you're creating your first Facebook sponsored ads or your first, you know, even your first 50 Facebook sponsored ads, I would recommend getting away from um, dynamic formats and creative. And what I'd usually do is go with something really simple to get started, like a single image ad. OK, so let's go ahead and select single image. We've turned off dynamic creative. We've gone ahead and selected single image. Then we're going to go down to the ad creative section and we're going to add some media. So the first thing we need to do is select the image that we're going to use. So let's click on add media and add image. 
And what we're going to do, there's loads of example stuff in here, by the way, so don't worry about that, is we're going to advertise this rainbow cake. Okay, it's very similar to an ad we've created for a client of ours that worked really, really well. Um, it's a fantastic image that we've got here. And I'm going to use this as an example to walk you through the ad creation process. So um, I obviously selected this image that was already in our page, but you've just seen on the previous, I probably skipped over it too fast, but you've just seen on the previous window, you could just upload an image from your computer. Very straightforward to do. Once you've done that, the next thing, and you, by the way, you could do this with video as well. If you've got videos that are there and ready to go, absolutely fine to get started with videos um, with your Facebook sponsored ads and videos often perform very well. Okay, don't. I just want to keep this as simple, as easy for you guys as possible to get started. You can add in layer of complexity later. So once you've added in your ad creative, which is your image, video, things like that, you can then select how it's going to look in various placement options. So obviously when you see ads, sponsored ads that are in stories formats, um, they're vertical, aren't they? They take up the whole screen. So that's what we can see over this left-hand side. Usually we would replace this image with a, a better option that's going to fit the space better. And you can just use that literally by clicking the replace button. We don't have anyone ready to go, any image ready to go for that. So I won't do that in this case. But you could also go with this original. It doesn't look great there, but it will look much better when Facebook and Instagram do their thing to it and make it look fine. So you can just go with the original image. For feeds, um, I really like the one-to-one -one placement. That's how it looks there. I think that looks great. We could also go with the original, but I would I'd quite like to zoom in on the main main feature. And then right column search results, there's, you're not going to get as many impressions in this format. If I go with that format, um, it is absolutely fine. I could also keep the original but we could zoom in, that's gonna work as well. So this is just like a visual check to make sure that your image looks good in the various placement options that you're going to use. As I said, we could use, we could get a completely different image made um, or edited up, which we often would for the stories placement, and we would just click on replace and upload it, super simple. Then you would click on next and Facebook will automatically add enhancements. So they're gonna um, crop out dead space, they're gonna enhance. This is kind of works similarly to like photo editing software where you click like the enhance button, it turns up the contrast and things like that. So absolutely fine to allow those. Then we click done. Fantastic. So we've now got our image added in. I'm going to get rid of this stuff here. because I said there's going to be lots of warnings and we can start to see here. Look how our, if I let me scroll down and see how our ad is starting to look. OK, so we've got the image, which is still in the process of being enhanced by the looks of things. We've got the image and you can see here that these are various placement options. So that is, the, this is the, how it's going to look in the Facebook newsfeed. We're going to add in the information here, of course, but that's how it's going to look in the Facebook newsfeed. I think that's a fantastic looking image. You can go across, that's how it's going to look in Instagram, Facebook marketplace. Um, this is what it's going to look like at the moment in stories. Uh, this is the Instagram stories option, which as I said, doesn't look anywhere near as bad as, as it looked in the preview. Okay. But we could, we could upload a different image. You can go through the various placement options and see and make sure it all looks good. OK, now if we jump back to Facebook newsfeed. Now, once we've got the image added in, we keep scrolling back up. Then we need to add in the primary text is the next thing. And by the way, if you didn't manage to customize your ad creative in the image uploading window, you can do it here. So you can edit the group and make adjustments and things like that all in the ad creative section. Very simple. Right. Primary text. So I've prepared a document. Um, here. So this is the primary text. Let's go ahead and oh, let's go ahead and grab this stuff. And we're going to copy and paste this in to the primary text. Now the primary text is going to appear in different places on different um, placement options. So for example, you'll see that the Facebook newsfeed, the primary text appears above the image. You probably, if you've seen Facebook sponsored ads and paid attention to them, you've probably seen this sort of thing. And you can see that what we're looking to do with this primary text is sell the product, you know, and you could do this with a service as well. So I'm going to quickly read through this. Our signature rainbow cake smothered in white chocolate buttercream frosting and topped with fresh fruit. But the best bit, it's only 150 calories per slice and we're currently offering a 10% discount. Seriously, click shop now to brighten up your day. So you can see there that we're we're being really emotive in the copy. We're trying to highlight the benefits associated with this product, why people want to buy it. It's, you know, um, it, very descriptive words. We're highlighting the fact it's only 150 calories per slice. If there's a 10% discount, so we're incentivizing people to take action. And it's fun and, and appropriate to the 
product that we're advertising, but also the platform we're advertising on. Facebook and Instagram ads don't want to be stale and stuffy. They want to be lighthearted and fun and, and useful. And um, and yeah, so that's that's the sort of tone we've gone with here. That sort of copy can work really well. Obviously, you can take something like that and use it for your own product or services. And we said, click shop now to brighten up your day. So there's a call to action at the bottom. And we've included a bunch of emojis, which is always fun. Right, then we want to add it. Oh, by the way, you can see that the primary text, if I scroll down, options look different um, depending on the placement. So I said the primary text is not above the image on Instagram feeds. We've got the information in down beneath it. But there's not, you know, you don't really have any control over that. It's because you're advertising in different locations. And that's nothing to worry about. Right, then we come back in and let's grab the headline. Mouthwateringly good, low calorie cakes. So let's go ahead and get that added into the headline. You can see it's optional, but I would strongly recommend you add one in. And if we go back to our Facebook uh, feed option and scroll down, we can see, oh, it hasn't added it in just yet, but it will do. It'll add in that uh, that headline for us in there. Mouthwateringly good, low calorie cakes. Again, benefit rich. Uh, emotive, makes people want to take action, all that sort of stuff. Description is optional. We've got one ready here. Um, and we're just emphasizing the fact that there's a limited time, only 10% discount. So we're incentivizing action. And we're also, by giving the 10% discount, and we're also adding an urgency, like do it now. This discount is going to go away. If you can do something like that, that's really um, helpful. I'd leave that disabled for the time being. Again, something you can potentially look to, to do in later on. Then we've got the call to action button. Hopefully this is now uh, it hasn't added in the headline yet, but it, it, it'll get there. But we can see we've got the call now to now function is learn more. I think for something like a cake, that's not really appropriate. I think um, we want to go with, hunt it down, shop now. And out of these call to action buttons, don't overthink it, guys. Just go with the option that is most applicable to whatever it is that you're selling. If you're trying to get someone to subscribe to something or to contact you or download something, just go ahead with the best option. In this case, it's going to be shop now. Then, of course, we need the page that we're sending people to on our website with an ad like this. That would usually be the product page. I'm just going to pop in a URL to get rid of the various um, warnings, just a URL to my website. And then if you wanted to, you could have a different display link. So the display link is this section. You can just about see it here. We've got lead guru at UK. You could add in something uh, to make that look different if you wanted to. Again, it starts to get tons of complicated stuff in here, right? Um, instant experiences, events, just when you're getting started, don't worry about that. It really is quite a, a minefield. Again, just a quick note on the languages. You know, you can add your own translation to automatically translate your ads to reach people in more languages. Maybe that applies to you. Maybe it doesn't. Depends where you're advertising. So that might be something you want to look into. And then tracking down here, all this should be set up for you automatically. And um, if you've got the Facebook pixel set up correctly. And again, as I said, there's a video in there a link in the video description below that shows you exactly how to do that. But we've now got our ad created, okay? So you can see the headline has finally been put in there. I'd recommend you have a quick check through, make sure, you know, how does the ad look in various placements? Do we need to make any changes? You can see the text in there in stories, fantastic. And then you can go ahead and click publish. Once you click publish, an ad like this will usually, um, you know, take 30 minutes or so to be approved. Facebook has like an algorithmic approval process where they're making sure you're not breaking any of the rules. If you're unfamiliar with the Facebook advertising rules, I'd strongly recommend you check out another link in the video description to a video all about Facebook advertiser policy. If you break the rules, your ads will be dis uh, will be disapproved and your ad account could be disabled. So make sure you're familiar with the ru rules with your ads before you go ahead and launch any new campaign. But if I close this down now, and then once you run the ad, you'll see it takes half an hour or so to be approved. Then once it starts running, you're gonna start see results coming through. Um, there is a bit of a reporting delay, so be aware of that. If you're thinking, well, I'm not getting any results yet, it could just be they haven't come through yet. Um, but then you can go in ahead and make adjustments. So you could see, okay, this ad is not performing well, let's turn it off, let's create a new one and try again. You can also have a look at performance at the ad set level, and you can go ahead and create multiple campaigns. It's all sorts of stuff. As I said, I've got tons and tons of things for you guys to, to check out on my channel. If you're new to Facebook advertising, you're relatively new to Facebook sponsored ads, lots of stuff that should be really helpful. Make sure you get it right. Make sure you don't waste money. Make sure you don't um, make mistakes. Now, before I go, a couple of things I want to quickly mention. The first is a free webinar I've created called Three Killer Facebook Ad Strategies to Double or More Your Revenue. So I've showed you how to create a direct to offer campaign. There are other strategies that you may want to use depending on your products and services, okay? Um, so I'd strongly recommend you go through this webinar. It is completely free, about 60 minutes long. It's gonna show you exactly step-by-step -step how to create awesome sales funnels. Link is included in the video description below. I said completely free, go ahead and check that out. Um, I think you'd be very glad that you did, particularly if you're new to Facebook sponsored ads. 
Other free thing I want to mention is my Facebook ads mastermind group. So I have a Facebook group full of Facebook advertisers. There's currently 125,000 members. It's one of the biggest communities of Facebook and Instagram advertisers anywhere in the world. An amazing community full of people just like you wanting to get better results with Facebook ads, um, learning from each other, asking questions, getting them answered. I do free live trainings in there. I'm in there every single day amazing community. So I'd strongly recommend you go ahead and join. Again, link in the video description, which I know I've said about a thousand times in this video, but hopefully that's uh, all to stuff that's going to really help you guys out. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out. It's much appreciated. Please comment below if you've got questions. Please comment below if um, you enjoyed it. I, the feedback is always welcome. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. I release Facebook and Instagram advertising related content all the time, uh, more than just about anyone else from what I can see. And if you want better results with Facebook and Instagram ads. You're getting going down this Facebook sponsored ads journey, which can absolutely be incredibly profitable. Then um, yeah, I think I've got a lot of content that can help you out. Okay, thanks a lot guys, bye for now.